Welcome to Owen and Baru's Barbecue. Thanks for joining us today. We, we're we so excited to talk about The Mandalorian. Uh, the TV show just dropped on the air. We're cooking up something really special for you tonight. Uh, and it was in that episode. It was fried, spit-roasted monkey lizards. So mm. if you like those monkey lizards, and I know you do, we've got a couple great chefs in the, in the house tonight for you. Uh, Chris? You you just walked out of the desert. I'm so glad that you're back. I'm glad to be back. What desert are you referring to? I don't know. Tatooine Desert. Okay. But more importantly, <laughs> we have a big, big special guest on this, this episode. Uh, Crazy Hank, a.k.a. Jack Glatfelter, is finally on Owen and Brew's Barbecue. Now well, he can't I had, complain I had, about it. I had to beg. I really did. did. Uh, but I, I know I'm replacing Nick tonight. Do I have to hate the episode? No, no. no Nick doesn't no. hate everything. So okay. He just, so he's to... just very critical. Okay. All right. Yeah. Even when he when he likes something, he's critical of it. I think. That's I know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. How how do I come? I mean, because I, I I did like the episode, but I don't want to be too gushy because that wouldn't be Nick. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to fill in for Nick's, Nick's streaks. Just like the Mandalorian doesn't have to fill in. <laughs> and I didn't come in from the desert. I was just here at my house. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, that Chris hasn't been on the show for a while. Uh, I get it. I get ah, it. And, yeah. and, yeah, except that know, was on the last episode. So, I mean. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well, anyways, but you know, you know, we've all been waiting, though. I mean, it feels like for a very long time. Uh, and it, the the day has finally arrived, and that day is today, which was the premiere of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus. It was it was like Christmas Day, right? I know, and like, I have spoken. <laughs> That's all you're gonna say for about the whole episode. I How many people probably called in sick today at work, for work? Uh, I think some of my students wanted to call in sick. Okay, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it uh, it was great. Uh, the the app dropped. Um, and also, I kind of knew that there'd be some glitches <laughs> along the way. So um, and so, I know that some people weren't able to to watch or stream it immediately. But I I didn't have any troubles. What about you guys? None. No, I I thought so. I stayed up till a little bit after midnight last night just to see if maybe for whatever reason it would it would air Eastern time. Even though everywhere the online says it's not going to be until three a.m. Eastern or you know midnight West Coast, but I stayed up just to see, and it, no, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't there. <laughs> uh, so I woke up, I got to work, and uh, I sat in a lot of traffic to get to work today. Yeah, and it may or may not have passed the time illegally. <laughs> Did it may or may not hold up, even if you were. Well, the Watch. steering wheel held it up. Oh, oh, I mean the uh, show you mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you know, so it, it was, it was, I loved the open, right? Because I think everyone kind of thought that maybe you'd have that traditional Star Wars. And it was just, it was, it was not, you know, it was, it was a completely different take. And oh, it, was, yeah. it was, it was dark, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was good um, and gritty. You know, um, I, I don't know how far if we want we're gonna get into talking about the show this far, but I think I think all aspects. But let's let's go ahead and get Jack. Jack, you've you've you'd hardly know anything about Star Wars, um, from my understanding. That's why we've never had. Well, I, I, I'm not like I'm not like I wouldn't say a Star Wars geek, but you know, I I did see the original. I kid, I kid. And, I, I know, I know. You saw the original, and you were a big fan. You waited in line, I waited in line, and like everybody else, and. I'm, I'm not a huge. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I, I compared to others, like well, probably you two. I'm just, I'm just a guy. But Jack actually didn't know that the Mandalorian was a Star Wars show until it popped up on Disney Plus. <laughs> One thing that Jack does know is westerns. Right? You're a big fan of westerns. Right? I'm a huge fan of westerns, so obviously, I love the beginning of this. Right away, you, you know, what? if we're going to talk about it, yeah, I, I was thinking the whole time. I go, this could be Clint Eastwood, a spaghetti western man with no, you know, no name. Where he, man of very few words, he walks in. I'll let you guys go further, but that was my first impression. I go, the Mandalorian could be Clint Eastwood. 
Well, that's just it. That's that's the that's that's Star Wars soup to nuts right there. Yeah. So it, it started off as um as George Lucas's idea to be a, a space western, right? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, uh, going along those lines, it, it it absolutely fulfills that role. And and Boba Fett was created as a character like the Man with No Name, right? So so a lot of him was modeled after. So I think to call it back around, you mm-hmm. know, and, and to go to the roots and the origin of of where this character comes from. To play it up with a little bit of uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, and and that theme song, right? Yeah, that that theme song is such a call out to uh, Marconi, you know, like as, well, the music. As, the music was great in this episode. Mm-hmm. So let, let's let's talk about the first scene, right? So the, okay. the first scene, we we are, you know, I think we've seen bits and pieces of this in the in the trailers up up leading up to the to the premiere. But it's clear that there's somebody being um, kind of um, roughed up a little bit in a, at, a, at a bar, at a cantina, right? Um, we don't know. I, I was not aware of the race of alien that that was that was in the bar that was um, kind of being pushed around. Um, do you want? Do you want to know? Yeah, look. it's they're called Mithril. Mithril, oh, okay. and he's right. a fledgingly Mithril. Mm. So. I, I thought it was Blue Man Group, but that's um, I was <laughs> so ahead, close. <laughs> so You're doing a great job. <laughs> it, it, was, it was definitely. Um, it, it felt like a western when when he walked into that pub, right, or that cantina, and he just walks up to the bar, very calm, cool, collected, and then almost as if the bartender knew, like he slid that mug across the across the bar and he just grabbed it and started smashing people. And, you know, that's kind of like the, the cold open to, to the Mandalorian. Where he's, he's getting into like a little bit of a bar fight. Um, and then later on, you find out that it was a bounty. Well, I like it, but it has the classic, you know, he, he's not saying anything. He walks, he sits down at the bar. He, the guy, sit. he doesn't even sit. He just stands there. And the, the guy is upset. They're the bounty hunters upset that he spilled his beer. Yep. You spilled my drink. You spilled my drink. And it's just classic, you know, where the guy's not. You think you know he's going to? They try to go over there and intimidate him. Of course, like you said, bartender slides a beer over, and, and all hell breaks loose. And yeah. we had a great, we had a great door scene, which I yes. thought was pretty exciting. Yes, <laughs> it, it wouldn't be Star Wars if somebody's not decapitated in some way, right? Yeah, I just thought well, that, that was that was just an amazing scene. I loved it. Well, I'll tell you that that's something we haven't seen in Star Wars, right? We've seen a lot of the Star Wars doors or hatches, kind of like. Mm-hmm. like those crazy fast opens and closes and we, we've never seen the what happens if you can't indiana jones one of these doors and um, we, we found out in the mandalorian that's it's gonna sure. it's gonna traumatize my kids going through uh, the grocery store do- doors now yeah <laughs> <laughs> they are not gonna wait for that thing to close on them so that so that ruffian got uh severed in half yes With his legs dropped to the floor split in two yeah um it, and this, I also I love the actors, the the actors that are talking. I mean, this uh, fledgling Mithril guy, uh, which we really don't ever learn his name, um, at least from what I could could gather. It, 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 they, if you put the closed captions on, it does it does show his name, and I forgot what it was. I apologize. It, the closed caption for me just said Mithril speaking. Oh, is it, so, maybe, maybe I thought that was his name. I guess that's yeah. what mine said also because I turned it on so I could get the names, but that's what it was saying. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, he's obviously the bounty. It, it almost reminded me of Paul Giamatti or, you know, somebody like trying to talk their way out of like, I don't know why I kept thinking of, of Giamatti, but like just his character kind of like the way he sounded just reminded me of yeah. that, you know, and, and at first he, oh, we have to mention the, the, the river sticks here. It, it kind of reminded me of that, uh, image Rhea, of the, the boat kind of leading you to cross hell, you know, but he's really just getting a boat to, to where the ships are. Um, and he doesn't take the droid ship first, right? Who does? I wouldn't right. take the droid ship. Was yeah, this was no droids. <laughs> was we left that out. We had, left, well, there was a cool line though. He had before, as he picked before he takes him. Oh, okay. He says, I can bring you in warm. And then he goes to his gun or I can bring you in cold. Uh, and I said, I love that. I just, it was, instead of bringing him dead or alive, it was just, it was just a great line. And uh, he said, I, I love Westerns. And it's, this thing was just, just reeling me in. This is so cute. Jack's becoming a Star Wars fan. 
<laughs> well, it was, a, it was it was a great line. I mean, it was, yeah, just, it was. It, it the was way good. it was the way it was done. He, 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 you know, the, the the directing and the camera angles were perfect too. Because he goes, you know, I can bring in cold, and he goes to his gun. The guy goes, okay, I'm good. But anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. And, and, and when they're waiting for the ship, it, uh, myth, the Mithril guy's like, "Dude, I'll call an Uber. Like, no worries. I'll, I'll yeah. get a nice car. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, I have the coin. Like, I'll, 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 I'll get a ship out here to pick us up. He's like, no, yeah. no. And, and he, he did this ship too. Get, he did this is the but, ship. He's like, what this thing? But the first, later, he changes like, his tune. The hoopty of all land speeder hoopties rolls up with some like old guy driving it and, and the engine's backfiring and it's just like we're going to get into that thing to go across this, <laughs> this, this frozen river of, of dragons um, and, and they do but yeah you're right they get to they get to the shipyard or presumably the shipyard or at least where he, he landed his ship um, and he just starts talking trash about his ride well the guy never shut up no he actually had more lines in the episode than uh, the Mandalorian <laughs> I, I'd did. believe that um. Yeah, I I, uh, I love that that whole opening. Even that cool electric flute, right? So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right out of the snout. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like Willy Wonka, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, kind of. The loop is to come running and do cool. his. Uh... But here's the thing: in, in the next couple of scenes, we find out something that happens in Star Wars lore that it's never been discussed before in any movie or show that I've ever seen that has anything to do with Star Wars, is what happens when you have to take a dump in space. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is true. I, a vac- you need a vac tube, right? He needs a vac tube. So anyways, I, I think in the books, and I, I, I was kind of thinking about this, like um, they sometimes refer to the bathroom as a fresher, um, so I thought it was kind of the difference of, of like calling it, you know, Hey, I'm going to go to the restroom to, I got to go to the John or, you know, it's like the fact that you just call it a vac tube. It was like kind of low brow, you know? Oh, for so, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to, when I go to a public place, I'm saying, do you have a vac tube? <laughs> and, and, and let's be real. I mean, the Mandalorian, he, he requires no privacy, right? Because the vac tube was right there. Yeah. You know, you walk down or you climb down the stairs, you hang hang a quick left, and you you drop your trousers, and that, that's 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 where that's how it happens, folks. That's how it happens in Star Wars space. Is you just sit there on a back tube, and God knows what happens. Actually, what happened to happen my gym class in high school? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but before before any of that happens, he somehow. Did you catch this? Like he somehow the first attempt at punching in a passcode into the little keypad opens up his weapon. It's like, right. like a, a allotment. Like eh, that was a little weird. Like he just tap 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 tap, and all of a sudden this door he, opens. He in. put in he yeah he put in password. He put now in why password. Would, why would, password. why didn't the guy take the uh, weapons a weapon? I don't know, but I I I was watching. I did do a screen grab, and he actually typed in one two. Three, four, five. <laughs> so his password is password. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same password I have on my luggage. <laughs> no, I mean, you bring up a fair point. I I mean, why? I almost kind of thought, like, was this a trap in itself? Like, he just keeps it. Or like, he has just so much confidence that he just is like, oh, whatever. Like, like yeah. that scene, maybe I'm overanalyzing it, but that scene actually threw me off to think that, oh, they're actually, like, bros like he knows the passcode to get into the thing oh sure oh. I can see that yeah like but well, in that the case yeah um well unless he was looking for something else perhaps like an escape pod yeah so he's probably, um, uh, he's probably in the back tube <laughs> before we keep going with the storyline uh we failed to mention the the ravenax uh, which we see very oh, briefly, yeah. uh, this walrus alligator, basically, creature. Um, and uh, we also get to see the Mandalorian use that cool staff to, yeah. like, you know, it's like a big, giant electric tuning fork. Y- uh, you, you know what that's from? I do. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the, the original Boba Fett, uh, when it appeared in the cartoon... Uh, for the uh, Star Wars Holiday Special. Yes! Which also, there's a shout-out to Life Day. 
Um, yeah, there is. There's two you, holiday special references. Yeah. So the original uh, Boba Fett carried a long staff like that in the cartoon. So, hmm. yeah. And uh, it's it's probably one of the best things that came out of the Star Wars holiday special. But uh, well, they made they, they actually made the Boba Fett like uh, action figure have one, I think, if I recall. I don't. I don't think the the original uh, action figure did, but they may have came out with a, a later issue. Maybe oh, that's right. He, the original one had like the uh, the rocket that shot out of his back that like right. kids choked on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So there's two. There's you're right. There's two references to the infamous um, Star Wars Holiday Special. Now, was B. Arthur in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. B. Arthur was in this episode too. Yeah. So. Okay. I almost wonder if that was like uh, John Favreau's, like you know, someone had a dare. If you can like t- somehow tie in the holiday special well, now, to have, the show. Have you heard the reports where he wants to do a a new Star Wars holiday special? No. Yes, he has said that. He said that he was. Come just on, like, John. John. Okay, was he drunk or was, was, John? Was if you're listening, if, if you're he, listening, and you know he is. You're, you're this is you're not money with this one. You're, it's so not I, money. I want to see him do it. If, no. he, if he can pull this off, like why not do? Give him the holiday special. Let's because the man, a Mandalorian race is cool, man. Right. Is like true. seeing seeing half the cast all strung out on quaaludes, not cool. We don't need that. Maybe he can improve it. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Yeah, it um, could be worse. We digress. So another, one of the other cool things is that he does open up that that cabinet with all the weapons. But what he also sees is he sees like it's almost like he's in like you remember uh, you go into Spencer Gifts back in the eighties and nineties and you look at the poster <laughs> section and you're yeah. flipping through those the, the poster display which is like this big old fan of like you flip through all the different posters you find the one you like and you pull the tube out from down below. Well, that's what happens when he found all the carbonite of all of all of his bounties just like chilling. He, so I I, I, I didn't it. look, I didn't look, nor nor was I. Uh, I don't maybe if there was anything there, but were there any uh, likenesses that we knew um, in the frozen and carbonite, or was that just kind of a thing? I tr- I tried to wreck it, but I didn't see. Anybody. I I didn't see any yeah. of it that looked looked familiar. So, um, but I did wonder though, did he recognize some of those people because they were all maybe kind of he all did. The same. Yeah. yeah, like he himself was like, oh, they got Paco and they got you know. Uh, chili and they got I don't know what's up with all the Mexican food names. Yeah, I I don't know. I just assumed that they it's a Western, so Paco and all right. Paco. I was trying to think of like what the girl's name would be. Um, so but anyway, I digress. <laughs> Chris is just shaking his head right like, now. No, just stop talking. <laughs> Anyways, so so he gets tossed he gets tossed into the carbonite thing and psh, there it is like and, and he's he's part of the collection. Nice to have a portable one. I didn't know that you could make those. So I thought you just had to go to Bespin. Like a portable it's true. carbonite, like not bad. Yeah, it's like the Keurig of carbonite. Yep. Just and then cool. and then fast fast forward, we get to go hang out with the dude from Lost. Yeah, that's right. Um. Not really, but yeah. <laughs> Carl Weathers. That's right. He goes to collect the bounties on the, uh, the, the pucks. So he's got these bounties. I think Jack just got the reference. <laughs> no, I know who Carl Weathers is. But I was like, I was the Lost. I was like going. He was in one episode of Lost. He was in the one with um, the TV show that uh, oh, uh, with the, Mickey with and Paolo. The... Razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Now I got it. His name in this episode or this show is called Grief Karga. Yeah, that's it's cool name. Um hmm. yeah, it's spelled G R E E F. So not the not the usual grief. But uh not the Charlie Brown grief. The Charlie Charlie Brown gr- grief. I like this like little uh you know cantina that that, that he goes into and you kind of get that old school vibe as well. So. Very most isolated. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you walk, he walked into that cantina, it looked like you could see someone who resembled Bosk. Okay. Um, maybe not Bosk himself. Right. Actually, I can't remember. Is Bo- Bosk survived Empire, right? I assume that he did. But the one that, that was in there, the Transdoshian, tra- I think they're called Transdoshians. 
Yeah. Um, he, I thought he was like a younger one. Like he almost looked like he was like, I don't know, thinner around the face. Um, anyway, um, yeah, this, this meet and greet here, um, basically he's trying to earn more money, um, and, uh, everything that he's got to offer. Um, basically he doesn't have enough. It's like, there's not enough to go around and whatever is around, there's not enough money for it. So kind of almost feel like the galaxy is maybe in like a recession. Yeah. It sounds well, like he did, he, he, the uh, Mandalorian didn't seem shocked that there wasn't enough money. They didn't have his full payment. Yeah. Well, he, he tried, he tried pulling back the pucks though, didn't he? Or the, whatever they were like, he was like, all right, I'm out. And then, then Carl Weathers is all like, Oh, Quit being dramatic or whatever, blah blah blah. Well, he wasn't going to take the imperial credits. Imperial credits don't right. matter. Right. The empire, right. the empire's gone. Yeah, um, but he did like the calamari flan. I think is flan. It was. Yeah, yeah, flan. Yeah, and my, my, and who doesn't? Who doesn't like flan? So not only is it a food, but it's also money. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jack, Jack, call, l- 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 give Jack a little in, insert a, a, a Jack history lesson for Star Wars really quickly. Um, calamari in Star Wars. Do you know what that is? It, like it, is it, it, it is not fit like a food that you eat, but it oh. is aquatic animal related. I don't know. So you remember um, it's a trap. You, you know who said that? Who said that? No. Oh boy, I don't recall. Okay, that's okay. Right. Well, the calamari are a race. Oh, I know. Um, I know. I know who you're talking about now. Yeah, he's got a fish head. He's a race, but they yeah. uh, they also yeah. are uh, famous uh, manufacturers of ships, oh. calamari cruisers. Oh, okay. So those those big cruisers that they use to battle um, the second Death Star and Return of the Jedi. Yep. It's, yeah. And then the the Radisson, which uh, Leia was on in the last chapter, the hotel, right? Yeah, maybe I messed that up. Maybe it's not the Radisson. Maybe I'm thinking of the hotel. <laughs> so the Radis, I think, is is what it is. Anyway, um, I digress. Um, let's get back to to this episode, though. Um, so Carl Weathers, gr- grief, Karga <laughs> gives him a. a a different kind of face-to-face deal and not a bounty puck because clearly he needs something more. So that's a unique opportunity. Well, what was interesting though, before you do that, he sure. actually says, how, how many, how many bounties do you have? And he's like, I'll, use, I'll take them all. Right. Yeah. He was willing to do it all. But then Carl jumps in and is like, Hey, and this is the first reference to the guild, mm-hmm. right? right. So there's, there's a bounty hunter guild. So um, he says well, there's, there are other guild members. So like leaning towards the idea that he's got to play, you know, his cards right as well. He needs to have other bounty he's hunters. Spread, he's got to spread wanna, it wanna, out. Yeah, he wants to have other bounty hunters want to play ball. Yeah, but, but he says I got something else for you. Big time. Well, I guess he didn't. Uh, the Mandalorian say you know he said five thousand. That doesn't even pay for fuel in this day and age. Right. right. That's that's what goes to my whole like recession recession idea. Like clearly, with it. times are times are tough. Yeah. So, um, and then to kind of get down to the nitty gritty of like times are tough. This job that he goes to to uh, find. Right. Oh wait, am I skipping that? No. Yeah, he goes to this this job first because he. Um, I thought it was interesting because he goes through a door and then there's like a basically a gonk droid, but it's kind of a fancy gonk droid leads him into this. So it's like a double door kind of area, which opens up and reveals stormtroopers. But not not before speaking about recession on his way out like over to this place. Not, he also passes by like at least two or three like seemingly down and out and or homeless and or hooked on spice. Um, yeah. Residents of that of that of that planet that they're on, just kind of like sitting there in the, in the back, in the back alley. So yeah, it was definitely a rough and tumble atmosphere. One of them looked um, like they were hooked on V, you know, like video VR glasses. Like yeah. Slumped over in the corner. Yep. Yeah. We are, so times are right. tough since the empire has been destroyed. That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, it's actually a nice tie into a, um, one of the books I read, I, f- I forgot which one it was, but it was, it was the, the, the what happened, the aftermath it actually is the book. Star Wars aftermath, but it was definitely like this this period of strife in between when the Empire 
you know, falls and it's in between the empire falling and then the resistance starting, um, you know, the, what do they call it? I forgot what it was. So anyways, the new, the new form of government, but, but you're, you're right. So it's, it's, it's definitely a, a rough time at some point. We, but we, I don't know what the timeline is with the Mandalorian yet. Have we established that? We, we know that it's after return of the Jedi. We don't know yep. exactly how many years after. Okay. So, and we know that it's before the force awakens. So, but you're right. We did see some familiar faces when that door opened, and those are the familiar faces of the bucket heads. <laughs> they were those suits were grimy. Rough. Yeah, they, they 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 weren't white. They weren't like the normal. They were rough. That are yeah. Just, yeah. And and I just kind of imagine like like those are his hired hands. Like they're basically like maybe he was an imperial governor clearly at some point in time, and like this is all that he has left. Yep. So I was kind of thinking about that with like the whole security setup there where he's got the, you know, it's like that fancy gonk droid is like just a little piece of whatever he's got left and he's just kind of sitting on. But this is the point where Jack got excited because he thought he was watching the crossover with Man in the High Castle uh, <laughs> with, with Werner Herzog in the, you know, sitting there, um, which is the first non British sounding empire. Um, you know, commander. True. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was the, definitely the first uh, German accent that we had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and and this was a great scene. I love, love the standoff um, that occurs there. That that cool line about like the the whole four to one odds, and he's like, "I like those odds." That's, yeah, I like those odds. Yeah, yeah that was that was nice. Um, so he gets this offer, which is very vague. There's um, we learn about chain codes, uh, f- tracking fobs in this episode, and the big coup de grace is this this uh, Beskar that's mentioned. So the Beskar is the armor um, he's offered up. He basically gets an advance on this job and has said, look, I have a whole camto of Beskar, which I assume just means a crap ton of this armor. So because we don't we don't know what a camto is. Um but anyway, uh, this this metal though is is awesome. We we it opens up kind of some myths, you know, behind the the Mandalorian. I, I love this this whole aspect of this yeah metal and how important that metal is to them. We find out a little bit more about that in the, in the the next scene. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you on that. That was like the we start you, you you in the in the next scene you get to see a little bit more about that. You get some flashbacks involved as well. Um, which is very, very cool. Um, but there's, I did a little bit of research online um, about that metal. And oh, okay, cool. There, well, let, let's get into the next scene, actually, and then we can talk about what that, that background of it is. You know, you know, before we go to that next scene, this would be a great time to take our commercial break so that, uh, you know, those that are listening, you know, might want to just tune in and do our advertisement. <laughs> And welcome back from that advertisement. That was, that was a good long wait there. I was glad you stayed with best, us. Best ad of the show. And, uh, you know, before we get to, to what Chris, Chris was going to talk about, I just wanted to say how awesome is it to watch TV that is not punctuated by commercials? Yes. Like it frees up the, the movie storytelling, the cinematography aspects, the whole the whole way. Like there's just no... Gotta gotta lead up and lead you on a cliffhanger so that you'll come back. You know, it's just one solid sweeping. Okay, Chris, sorry. Next scene. Yeah, no worries. So the next scene there, um, he brings uh, the Beskar in his calamari uh, flan um, to a character that is known as the Armorer, uh, which appears to be a female Mandalorian. Um, Hands over the loot. And it's like, here, I got this. And she's like, ooh, look at that. All right. She goes, let's let's see what we can do about this. So she takes that that chunk of metal. And there's a really cool sequence um, about how that how she places that metal into, like, whatever, you know, um, equipment she's using to melt things down. And it just starts melting down. She starts making a cast of something, right? Um, which is awesome because then it goes into what looked like some flashbacks, Um of his childhood because 
he she says that there's enough here for a pauldron and then some more for the um oh god what was it the reform the foundlings more for the foundlings which is um presumably the kid, the children of right. the Mandalorian children so you go through like some some flashbacks of uh what appeared to be like um i think there was like droids taking over like his town right or wherever he lived or his village or wherever it was and it's just actually kind of cool because it kind of throws back and almost provides a little bit of a human side to the Mandalorian of like his, his upbringing and talking a little bit about like, or showing at least some of the humanity behind his character and how he was essentially um, orphaned and, or went through like a real tough, you know, uh, tough time as a kid being separated from family, et cetera. You don't really get too many details, but you can kind of get the, the feel and the sort of what's going on. Um, which is awesome, and then after that, like she she busts out this pauldron, which is essentially like a, like a nice nice fancy way of saying a, a shoulder plate. <laughs> but, uh, um, but if you are uh, know anything about the um, the Mandalorian armor made of this stuff, it's known to be able to to withstand some significant um, energy dissipation and like you know from. It can deflect, you know, blaster bolts to it's actually also known to be able to, to take a blow from a lightsaber, which is interesting. Um, so I want to learn a bit more about that metal. And I did look it up and there is uh, there is although it was not described in the show, um, there is a uh, there was a refer to the great purge, uh, which is what the armor her, armor had said, although it's not confirmed, but it could be uh, tied to the siege of Mandalore. Um, which is when uh, Ashoka Tano attempted to free Mandalore from the resurrected former Sith Lord Darth Maul. Hmm. Yeah. Which, which, if Darth Maul makes his way into the Mandalorian, you heard it here, folks. All right. I'm calling it. Okay. Matt, I think Matt doubts you, though. He does. I doubt you. That's just all right. Time, just you how imagine how cool that would be if we got to see Darth Maul in the Mandalorian. I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna spoil you on anything. So, um, and I don't want the listeners to write in and and say that you know Chris is wrong on this. But you'll you'll find out in time. I don't know. I, I think he's saying you're wrong, Chris. Oh, he, he's he's probably alluding to the fact that Darth Maul dies in Zed Siege, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> did there, he, did, did maybe, he, maybe he there, die? Maybe there will be Darth Maul in the Mandalorian via flash flashbacks. Ooh, I like where you're going with that. What do you I, <laughs> just just because I threw for those of you listening at home, which is all of you, I am now flipping that off. Thanks. <laughs> And the ones that can see that on Crazy Ain't TV. I'm <laughs> just trying. I'm just trying to help you. Out. Oh, uh, you know, bef- um, we're uh, we're talking about a couple different things. I don't mean to jump around. I meant, wanted to mention the character of Doctor Pershing uh, that comes out and is very concerned about this uh, reward or this bounty. You know, specifically being alive. So, right. just wanted to yeah. bring up his character because I think we'll probably see this character again. Yes, so I agree. Concur. Uh, I concur. I hear you. Uh, you know, one thing about this this whole scene where he's getting his armor. Um, the first time through that I watched, you know, he enters this dark space, and you kind of think like, oh, he's still in some kind of slum or lower, you know, kind of like. But no, as soon as he enters into that, that dark hallway, he's actually in the sanctuary of his clan. And there's a moment where kids are running by, and you realize that when he's sitting in that armory, and she's making that metal, there are no doors behind him. He's sitting with his back to the door opening, which in any Western or any bad guy or good guy will tell you, you never sit with your back against the door. Nope. Um, but I thought it was while Bill Hickok made that mistake. (laughs) I knew you'd have some Western (laughs) reference to bring in there, but I just wanted to point out how he's making himself vulnerable in this space. He's safe in this, 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 uh, you know, clan home 
um, right. so to speak. So uh, I just, it's just interesting to note that, that aspect um, and that he's also kind of doing something uh, even though he's collecting these bounties, he's clearly doing something for his clan by the fact that he wants the foundlings to have the armor. He's doing right. something kind of for a community um, or a, a family unit that he's a part of. Um, and one one other kind of shout out to a show that Jack and Jay and I have been watching and podcasting about, which is The Watchmen. Um, Chris, I know you've been watching it as well, right? Don't know if you're caught up or not, but there was a a moment in a re- muted. Yes, I am. I'm caught up. Oh, okay, there was a moment in a recent episode, and I don't feel like this is is major spoilers. So if you're not caught up, caught up on the Watchmen, please please don't think that this is a spoiler. But there's a character that mentions that masks equal trauma equal pain, and I kept thinking about that moment when you see in his visor as he's wearing the mask these flashes of his past. And the armor's being built for him. I thought, wow, this this really showcases a theme that Watchmen uh, addressed in, in their show. So, yep. Um, anyway, so they ripped it off. <laughs> no, I just think we can kind of see how masks still relate to. Tr- okay, you're just messing with me. Fine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> so let it be written. So let, let it be said. Um. All right, after he gets his armor, what happens, Chris? Uh, so after he gets his armor, um, so he's got the... I'm trying to remember. Okay, so he, that's when he goes and, and lands on that planet. Right. Yeah. Where he, yeah. Where he meets uh, a couple of local um, fauna, <laughs> if you will. Uh, I forgot what they were called. They're, uh, blur- they're blurred. 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 So the best resemblance would be a um, cross between... Um, Pumba from the Lion King and a rhinoceros. I was going to say it, I was going to say a Dubak and a Tauntaun. Oh boy, <laughs> Def, definitely very Dubakian. <laughs> uh, so, well, he, here's the thing: is that he's yeah. he, he's got his sniper rifle out and he's just kind of scoping out what's going on in the distance. Yes. And I thought he, I thought he was going to take a shot at that one that he saw in his little thermal um, scope. And then very a la A New Hope, you know, what happens is that right in the middle of his scope jumps up, just like the uh, the sand people did to uh, to Luke, um, jumps in front of his scope and it starts going at him and attacking him. Right. Loved that callback. Yep. It was subtle, and, uh, but expected, and it still worked. And just like Obi-Wan did in the original... <laughs> He comes to rescue. Who comes to rescue uh, our, our fearless Mandalorian? Nick Nolte, the ball headed guy. Nolte. <laughs> <laughs> and he sounded like Colonel Potter. Like every time yeah. I, I, kept, like, <laughs> I kept thinking about Colonel Potter from MASH. Um, <laughs> I think it, I think the character's name was Kuhl? K U I L L? Kiel? Huh. Q, it was K U I L L. Nice. But, uh, it, 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 was, it, was, it was very cool how they did that, though, because that, that was clearly a throwback to A New Hope. And um, But, yes, yeah, so we, we meet this new new, new character who is, seems to be uh, a wise, uh, sagely individual who reveals that our fearless Mandalorian has not been the first to come this way. Exactly. Now, did you think he – is he an Ugnaught? Did you assume that he is? Yeah, what he he is, is. Okay. Yeah. All right. I didn't look up to, to verify, like, is that officially? But he looked like an Ugnaught. So. Yeah. He looks different from the Rogue One Ugnaughts, but I'm pretty sure he is. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look that up. A little taller. There, he was kind of tall in one moment. And I was like, oh. But uh, really liked his character a lot. Um, definitely a, a bit of a grouchy old man kind of aspect. He's like, I just want them out of here. These he kind of he kind of reminded me of me. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, I just felt that I was looking in the mirror when I was. Did watching you identify movie. with this? I, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. Confirmed. I like, the, I, like the, I like the. I like the dialogue between the two of them because he says, "Yeah, I've helped a lot. I've helped a lot of these, a lot of people out before." And he goes, "Well," and they died. He goes, "Well, maybe I don't want your help." <laughs> I just thought it was cool back and yeah. forth with him. Yeah. Um, 
and and how curt he was. Like it, it's funny because here the Mandalorian is a man of few words, and yet this guy actually tells you <laughs> when he's done talking. Yeah, <laughs> I've spoken. I've spoken. The Mandalorian just walks away. He's got nothing to say. Yeah. yeah. These these two are great together. Um. So, so he says, "Hey, the only way you're going to get there, yeah, the blurg, you, the blurg, you got you, you got to get down with, the, got down and dirty with this blurg here." Um, like, and, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, yeah, and we get a montage. It's not really a montage, them. but it's, it's, it's a, kind of it's like a montage. It's kind of it's like a montage. Hero. Yeah, yeah. They, they, he he builds a budding relationship with this blurg, right? And he gets down to gets down to it and like puts his hand on his head, and he's just like, "They're there." Well, once he realized he had to use the blurg, because he wanted, oh. you know, he, he, after that he's like, okay, I got to do what I got to do. Well, he was nervous because it was revealed that these female blurgs <laughs> eat their mates after doing it. No, so, okay. it's like, yeah. whoa, it's okay, into stuff happening here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it, did you? Know and, it, and it's not like they're that attractive. I, I might take a pass on it myself. I just have uh, you seen the men though? Oh, I don't know. Gosh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't they wear feathers and everything. No. <laughs> um, I like the real world aspects of, of this show and, and the fact that at some point, you know, he has his whole arm in one of those blurgs, right? He does. And later when you see it pulled out, like his little, this little control panel has been busted right there on his left arm. You know, it's yeah. like, it's, it's, but I yeah. believe his pauldron is what saved his arm. Oh Yeah. Well, I, it definitely saves it from uh, it's a bounty shot. Yes, so which which we're coming to. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he he learns magically how to write a blurb with. I assume that takes him less than a day. <laughs> <laughs> he had to win the blurb over. Yeah, uh, I also he's, like. He's I saw, he's saw with the flowers and candy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> The flowers and candy. No, I think he brought that to the uh, the cool, you know. So, oh, okay. um, so he learns fun. how to ride these damn things, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then there, then there is definitely a frolicking montage over <laughs> this. Uh, we, we find out why he needs to ride the blur is because there's these huge like gaps and like these almost crazy like desert you know landscape that they had to 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 run across but it looks like it hasn't, hasn't rained in a, hasn't rained in a while no, not, not a bit um but it seems like it was a, a quite the lengthy journey until they finally roll up on camp yeah um so uh this kind of sets up basically like w- what is like kind of the last act um and i really love how this episode was broken down simple efficient you know, straight and I get it with some of the Star Wars movies. Like, there's a lot of characters they're introducing. They're gonna have all of these these stories. But what was great about the Mandalorian is it really boiled things down. You know, um, and uh, he's he's scouting out this place and gets interrupted by this bounty droid. Ig, well, I like how, I like how he doesn't he doesn't like droids. Yeah, droids. I, I assume there's an Indiana Jones flashback here where we're gonna find it. Maybe it goes to what Chris's theory here is that it, it was a droid invasion that killed his family. That's probably what it was. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't trust droids. He doesn't like droids. They've they've never properly addressed a, a droid rebellion, but it's it's been played up a couple times in, in different stories of, of yeah. legends now. So I saw it in BSG. <laughs> Well, I would not want to take on one of these IG one one droids. Um, no, he's quick draw, dude. This is this was absolutely my favorite part of the episode, and I'll, I'll tell you, I got super excited. This is one of the, of the scenes that was in the the trailer for the first season, um, because at first glance, I thought it was IG eighty eight. We all knew IG eighty eight. Well, I mean, I mean, anybody who's a, a nerd knew about IG eighty eight from uh, right. the original the original um, trilogy. Um, and if you play any of the, um, from, you know, Star Wars for mobile games like Galaxy Heroes, you know, you know, of IG-88 and some of the other droids. So IG-88 is a, an assassin droid that is a, apparently a bounty hunter that's, um, I'm not sure it was unclear as to whether or not he's, he's operating uh, autonomously or if he is, um, programmed by somebody who's directing him. 
Hmm. Um, not quite sure, which could be yeah. interesting to find out. Um, but the the efficiency and the dance of his battle oh, was so cool, so cool to watch. Um, but first, he actually shoots the Mandalorian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm in the guild. Yeah, there it is. Here, here's the second reference to the guild, right? So the second he makes the reference of, "Hey, I'm in the guild. I'm in the guild." IG88 stops. He's like, "Oh, hey, bro, how are we gonna do this? Like, let, let's work this out." Yeah, he, he, he said to split it, but he wanted he he wanted the credit. Yeah, he wants the 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 uh, reputation the credits. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And he's like, well, I'm going to need an answer before I proceed. <laughs> well, that, that's true in any what any Western, the gunfighter, he wants to rep. You know, when you kill someone that's, that has a reputation, you want that I killed such and such. Yeah. So, I, I like the exchange between these two, and immediately, IG this IG. Um, I, I know I want to call him IG88 too. Uh, it's it's like so right there, um, but loved every minute of of this. Um, character i is he dead for good oh sorry i'm jumping um i i know jack's mad at me that i'm jumping ahead I, i'm kidding that, but, but i did want to say the scene reminded me you guys have seen butch cassie the sundance kid right? i knew it i knew it i was just waiting for you the end of the, the end the end of the when in the bolivia and, the, and they get recognized and they get they're outnumbered a thousand to one. All the shootings going on. And they keep going on. That's what the scene reminded me of. Because then you yep. even had the Gatlin laser gun. Yes. It just was. Uh, it was like, a, wow, this is Butch Cassidy Sundance kid. Yeah. Uh, what's What's interesting too is that um, you may not realize this or catch this unless you look at the credits or if you check on IMDb. Um, but Taika Watiti, also known from uh, being the director of uh, Thor Ragnarok. Um, and a number of other films as well was actually the voice of IG Eleven. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also the the new movie, the Jojo Rabbit, right? Yeah, and jo- yeah, exactly. Jojo Rabbit, the one that um, I believe Nick has already seen. Is going to do a review for us on the Ramblecast After Dark, the other show. Ding. <laughs> um, yes, Jack. Uh, back to Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I. I, I got that vibe as well. I really liked it. Um, there's something even just the way the pillars looked and the fact yeah, that they're, they're pinned was. down. Um, also, a, a little subtle callback to uh, Return of the Jedi because the Mandalorian's like, I got it. Like He's like over there doing the, the thing with like Han where he's trying to hotwire it while right. IG-88's like, taking all of the fire. Um, so I really liked that subtle callback as well. Not hitting you over the head with it. Um, and uh, it's funny that they get into this this moment, and and this is the other great thing about the battle droid or this bounty droid is that he's got to self destruct. <laughs> <laughs> like, and he kept telling him not really he kept him not trying to, to use. <laughs> yes. It's just so hilarious. It's like now I will kill myself. <laughs> like it's just. He said like three. Time. He said like three times. Yeah. He? And he he the Mandalorian said, "No, wait, no, <laughs> don't do it." I kept thinking that this was going to come in later, like that he was going to use that 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 bomb, but no. Uh, it gave it some comic relief because it is, a, you know, it's a it's a it's a cool scene going on as a gunfight, mm-hmm. but he also had some comic relief in as the gunfight is going on. I thought it was pretty oh, well yeah. done. No, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, so at at some point though, yeah, he just gets into this dead stance, like, well, there's nothing else to do. I can't advance it. And then the Mandalorians like cover me, and then they they. He gets the uh, IG one one gets shot, um, and uh, but in doing so, the Mandalorian is able to grapple the Gatlin gun, uh, laser gun, and, and destroy everybody. So, which was another little scene that was kind of teased in the trailers early on, and uh, looked so cool, so worthwhile to see that uh, how that played out, um, and uh, they kill everybody. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So well, how 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 cool was that scene though when um he's trying to figure out like how he's gonna how they're gonna overcome the um the onslaught of all these guys and all of a sudden they they, they wheel up that, that turret, right? Mm-hmm. And and there's just a very, very cool, like almost um Indiana Jones esque, like just the flourish of of 
jumping around and flanking the guy, taking yanking him off the gun, and then, and then just like riding that gun like he's a cowboy. I mean, yeah. insert the cowboy references again, of course. Yeah, no, that's um, and I was I was wondering too because so that gets to the next part where they can't get through that big huge heavy mm-hmm. door, and they use the the laser gun and then the, the door kind of falls in. I'm trying to think of, and I know it's been used a lot, but I was trying to think of like uh, any famous movies that might have used that, you know, that the, that the bad guys come through the, the door and it falls forward. Um, I know it's been used at some point. but Hundreds, uh, hundreds of times, but I can't. It just seems really classic, you know, that door falling in and there you have the two supposed heroes standing there. Because at this point, right. you're kind of you're kind of with, you know, the Mandalorian. You're like, I really don't care who this is, but I want to see them dead. Yeah. Right? Well, it's the title of the, the show is Mandalorian, so. No, but I mean, you want to see whoever the bounty is. No, I know. I'm just kidding. Oh. Okay. So, uh, what, did, what did you think about this this re- reveal here, Jack? Were you, you know. This- I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be Baby Yoda. You didn't know it was going to be Baby what? Yoda. Baby Yoda. Okay. I didn't know. That's good. I mean, I'm glad that I didn't know. I apparently I had was... no idea. Yeah. No idea. I'm glad because he's, he said because he says it because when he gets the code from the the guys that hired him, he knew it. He said it's oh it's it's a ba- it's someone under fi- someone that's fifty. Yeah. So he, he knew that the code was an age group, but he, but it's like even the droids said, well, there's different species that age differently. What a great Sorry. red herring! So, yeah. Um, as soon as I saw those ears, that silhouette of the ears, I was like, yeah. "Holy cow!" And then that flips yeah. around, and it's really nice timing on that reveal. And, because uh, when they when they because in it's those little circular thing. Mm-hmm, like, yeah. well, who's who's in that? That's, that's in a worth, worth all this. That. Yeah, what's worth all this death and destruction? Who's in there? Yeah. So they were they so were I, I, they were protecting him. I immediately wanted to search and see, like, what is, like, I don't think I've ever referenced or heard um, what, like, race or, like, you know, species Yoda actually was. And apparently there isn't one. Yeah, it's always been unknown. Because he was the last of his kind. Or was he? Or so we thought. Right. So, uh <laughs> This this sets up a really great mystery. I I had heard that this first episode was going to have something universe changing, and I'm like, how can they change the universe of Star Wars? What's going to be such a big deal? And I'm like, oh yeah, this is cool. This is this is nice. So yeah, it caught me completely off guard. I so no does, does that I mean no he's, he's 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 uh, force sensitive automatically? No, I don't think so. No. Yeah. Maybe he's maybe he does have a predisposition. I did kind of wonder. This is here was my one. Yes, it's a cute little Yoda baby. Okay, <laughs> but a if it is force sensitive, how do we know that it's not controlling the minds of all of these other people to protect it? True. Also, Cushing, Pushing, whatever his name is, yeah. Doctor, really wants it alive. Yes. So why is that, right? Maybe he wants manipulate it, grow it, manipulate. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Maybe they want to have a dark Yoda. Ooh, oh, dude, some... dark Yoda would be awesome. Yeah, I want dark Yoda. Dark Yoda. <laughs> Could you imagine that dark? That'd be amazing. A, a, a dark side Yoda. I hope. I hope pushing gets it. Or Cushing, whatever his name is. I hope the man wearing Pur- loops. Pershing. So you Pershing. want a dark? You want a dark Yoda. I want a dark side. Who doesn't want? Why wouldn't you not want a dark side Yoda? That would be awesome. How can how, how could you beat the dark? How can you beat the? Uh, you can't beat a dark Yoda. Have Have you seen the the last season of the Clone Wars? No. Okay. However, no. as of today, I can watch all of them. Okay. Well, I'll just say that there is something that happens towards the end of the Clone Wars that uh, really showcases this idea of a dark Yoda. So, really. Yeah, a little, little okay. teaser there. Of course, it is in the very last episodes of the last season of uh, Clone Wars. So, um, you know, Clone Wars is, is an interesting mix because there is some chronological stories that take place, but there are also stories that are kind of just sidebars, and it jumps around a lot. 
Um, so it's like, yeah. Well, here, here's another theory, right? So mm-hmm. we know that this baby Yoda is 50 years old. Okay. So if we try and create or recreate the timeline, we'll say, let's, let's give this 15 years after the destruction of the empire. We'll just throw that out there. Okay. I mean, those, those stormtrooper uniforms had about 15 years of the wear on them. That's why I look at it. Right. So okay. if we go 15 years back, that means that would be 30. So when Luke was in his twenties, when he became a Jedi. So, Baby Yoda here was born in between, if I'm doing my math, in between episode three and four. Okay. Um, no, because it would have to be 50 years after that. So it would be right. We would be the Mandalorian. If we're saying the Mandalorian's 15 years after Return of the Jedi. You were looking at minus 35 years from there. So 35 yeah. years prior to Jedi will probably put us, put us in right around the Clone Wars time, wouldn't it be? I would think so, around Clone Wars time. So who was Yoda getting it on with during the Clone Wars? I think that's a better question. And so, so <laughs> unless unless he can just reproduce himself through the through the force. Someone tells me that he was having some booty calls, <laughs> probably post Count Dooku battle because he was <laughs> BA in that battle. Um, so I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe he had a bedside Yoda. Now, is Yoda the one that said he, he was the last of his kind? Because I do remember Dude. that. So he's obviously, he, Yoda lied. He's a lying because he knew lingering. that because he, he knew baby Yoda was out there. Well, here's the thing, though. So, from everything I understand, you have to know, baby. It wouldn't be like one of those things where, wait, I'm the father. No, I, I think I th- he wouldn't have to. Be, he wouldn't have to go on Montel or what? Uh, he's he's, he's going to have like Maury Povich coming over. Maury Povich, you are the father. Oh, I did. I didn't use the force. Oh man, no I way. I didn't. I didn't force pull out. What? <laughs> <laughs> they have a, a yaddle on there as well. She was cheating on me. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, that's okay. Uh, Jack, you have any thoughts about Baby Yoda? I, I did. You know, I, did, I forgot that he was the. I you know, so we know that Yoda had to know about Baby Yoda. I'm not saying that Yoda knew because okay, he had, he, come on, he had. He's Yoda. All right. So from what I understand, this is taking place on the very edge of this this galaxy, right? So it's taking place in some some planets that maybe not might not be in the the middle. Um, and and we've heard a lot about wild space as well. So maybe maybe these creatures came from a I don't know I have no idea. This or is it wide open? What if Yoda was cloned? Ooh, if it took place during the Clone Wars, that's that, uh, but yeah. still still wouldn't he know? Mm, well, I don't know. Yeah, I need to get your DNA here. Why? Count, Count Dooku could have uh, done a little. Well, not only that, but the emperor. Know. I mean, that that emperor was pretty sneaky. Yeah, so, I mean, but, but yeah, anyway, I like that. crazy crackpot theories. Goes from Yoda getting some bedside um, Yodet coming after <laughs> after the uh, the battle of Dooku. Maybe Sheev Palpatine could have gone in and 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 collected a sample of Yoda's DNA and cloned him. Just took a syringe out of him while he was meditating. Could have been. We have no idea. You I, 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 I want. I want. I want to hope though. Uh, Yoda was getting his. Let's just. Let's just go on the edge. Sure. Air in the side of that. Maybe Yoda was getting some action. I, I'm looking at Yoda and thinking there's no chance for that. Yeah, but you also look at those blurgs and you're like, somehow they have to reproduce. Yeah, I guess that's you true. know. So, anyways, but then where's now, the other? Where's the Yoda at? Is she still? Is the Yoda at still alive? That's my question. That's my question. Who knows? Maybe she's under under wraps. Maybe 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 Pershing has her already. Either way, uh, it was a very cool reveal to see a little baby Yoda esque character. Okay, in the floating bassinet. Other question I'm going to throw out to you guys: How does this change the Mandalorian moving forward? He's already in for a penny, in for a pound. He's got the armor. He's already used part of that, that money. So, what's he well, going to do? He, he so he, I don't think he turns Yoda, baby Yoda, in. I think he I don't has, think so either. He's got that. He's got that thing for kids. 
Yes. You know, and you see, when you saw the flash, I think that's why mm-hmm. we saw the flashback where he, he's locked in and he's covered up. He's not going to turn baby. That's why he killed the, the uh, other. I don't think, I don't think he killed. I don't think he, cause that bounty guard, it's, it's since it's Detroit, it can come back, right? They can rewire it and come back. I right. I maybe and that, and that droid's going to come after him and come after him and baby Yoda. Well, IG 11 has only been credited for one episode. So <laughs> I think he's dead. <laughs> He's a smoking. Uh, uh, yeah, but I don't think I think uh, I think the Mandalorian does everything he can to save, uh, and there, there's going to be people after him, and that's why we're going to have the for the rest. Oh, of the definitely, season. there's going to be people after you. Don't you don't turn your back on. Um, turn a, I don't know. I don't know what his name is. Uh, I didn't. I didn't write that down. Uh, who he made the deal with? Um, the temple emperor dictator dude. Um, so, uh, I apologize for that. So I read, I was going to write it down, but I figured you would. So I, I, I do, I do write down a bunch of notes. That's, that's for sure. So, um, all right. Any other crazy thoughts that, you know, moving forward with this series, things, things that you think might transpire over the next nine episodes that we're going to get nine more. I don't know, man. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, though. There's, a, there's still a ton of characters that we've not yet met this season. That's true. Um, like a lot of characters. They've, are, they've, um, they've teased Kara. Yeah. Which uh, I'm, I'm curious as to when we're going to meet her. So, um, and, to, and to be fair, um, to be fair, if there any Letterkenny <laughs> fans out there, um, <laughs> IMDb might be incorrect. I sure. actually think will definitely be incorrect with how many um because it looks like everybody on this epi- on the on the show is only slated for one, two or three episodes. So I have a, a distinct feeling that IMDB is not accurate with their episode um count. Yeah. I would, All right. I would agree. Okay. So there's still a chance for IG eleven. All right. I, I I think that he has to go back and chase after uh a Mandalorian. I think that would make it Fun. It looked pretty smoking through his head, but you know who knows. I mean, these the, that IG eleven droid. I mean, it, it was it was a monster. So, hey, you fix it, rebuild it, make it stronger, I, um, faster. Chris, you had mentioned after you know, uh, just kind of in our own private message thread there, you you'd mentioned you know how much you love uh, John Favreau for this, right? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I, John Favreau took a story. He created a story. I shouldn't say he took one. Yeah. Like, this is an all original story that was written by. Um, I mean, there's a. I, I think he's he's got the writing credits along with George Lucas is, is has been like an advisor to him. Um, like this is a really could be. I'm gonna say after after watching one episode, could be some of the best like like original Star Wars content that I've seen. Um, post the movies. Now we think about it like I mean, it's a completely different take on the Star Wars universe. So, it, but you feel like you're in the Star Wars universe. Oh, yeah, that's that's the thing I really love about it is that it's it's definitely a new light. It's definitely a new take. It's super gritty, um, and uh, it's not the 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 fairy tale uh, force story, right? That you're that we've all been kind of used to slash force fed for better or for worse with the star Wars trilogies. Um, I'm excited for this show. Like, I, I I'm truly excited for the show. I think it has some significant potential. If the trail, if the, the, the pilot episode is anything like any of the, the if any of the future episodes or anything like the pilot, I mean, it's going to be great. And I'll, I'll tell you, there's been a review. There's a, I think they, to a bunch of reviewers they released i think like 30 minutes of footage which was a a combination of clips from the first three to four episodes and everybody who has viewed this footage to review it um says that the all 28 minutes of that what they got to see was amazing so um for what that's worth super excited i'm all in can't wait till friday to watch episode two so nice that we're getting a bonus episode, or not a bonus, but the, the, we're getting that two hours, basically, well, not two hours, because this was actually only 39 minutes. And at first I was like, oh, only 39 minutes, but man, I like how efficient the storytelling was. It wasn't like, right. we got to do this many minutes. It told told the story that he needed to in that amount of time. Uh, the music was great. Um, I I really enjoyed the, the soundtrack. Uh, immediately it was just like, 
okay, I need to know more. So uh, Lud- Ludwig Gor- Goranson. I'm sorry if I'm, I know I'm bird- b- murdering that, that name. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was brutal. Yeah. Thank you. So the, the Ludwig <laughs> part I get. Like I'm like, like the, 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 it's it's got that. It sounds sound like you just threw up in your mouth a little bit. <laughs> well, anyway, it is on iTunes right now, so you can check out the soundtrack. I've been loving it. Um, really, really great stuff there. And uh, whatever your name is, great job. <laughs> thanks, Ludwig. So, Ludwig, thanks for coming back. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to mention uh, Dave Filoni, who directed the the episode. Uh, I've loved loved his work with Rebels, and when I knew that he was attached to the show, I was just like, "Great!" Like, you know, I, I he's got that Star Wars knowledge that's very nuanced, where he can throw in. Oops, sorry, there's my Siri going off. Um, where he can throw in that knowledge of the Mandalorians, or throw in a, a creature like the Blurg, which has appeared in, in other Rebel episodes. Yep. So there's just. I don't know. I just feel like having him a little bit behind the scenes and I, I don't know, right out of the gate, I thought he took what Favreau put down on paper and, and made it come to life in a really great way. So, um, you know, fun, fun fact. Um, there is a not debut, but there's a, a, a fairly fresh director involved this series. Um, Bryce Dallas Howard. Directs oh, yeah. That of an episode. Oh, really? I did not know that. Yep. And I, at one point I had known, or I looked at like kind of that, that listing. I don't know if it's the fourth episode. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she, she has an episode that she's she's related to Clint Howard, right? No, she's Ron Howard's daughter. (laughs) I know that's the, (laughs) Oh, I missed that. (laughs) No, it's Clint Howard's niece. Yeah. So, (laughs) all right, guys. Um, I did, want, I, did want, I, did want, I did want to say you guys said how the also the directing and the camera work was excellent in this this episode too. Yes. Because there's a scene where they they pan up to the Mandalorian. We can't see his eyes, but it was like a western where they're just looking at his face where you would you he's in you know, there's a lot of westerns that intimidating with the, just the face. Mm-hmm. You can't see his face, but I just that was great camera work. So anyway. Love the love the angles, love the camera work, love the directing, the music, the writing. So far, like Chris said, I'm in. And and Jack, as far as like Star Wars, you know, coming from from your your perspective as someone waiting in line when you were twelve, right, to see the first Star Wars. Uh, Seventy six. I was um, fourteen. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to to make you younger there. I know you. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, it was, it, I might have been, it was probably, I was probably 13. I probably wasn't 14 yet. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, ever since Star Wars came out, I mean, I think every Star Wars fan, young and old, have wanted a Star Wars TV show, live action. Am I right? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, that's kind of, I mean, Battle and, they, and usually when they do a movie from a, t- a TV show from a movie, it usually doesn't work. Right. And and growing up as a kid, I remember watching Battlestar Galactica and just being like, this is like Star Wars. Oh, but it's not. <laughs> I like Battlestar Galactica. I'm not going to bash it, but you had Planet no, of the I... Apes. They did Logan's Run tried to do a show. Animal House, they tried to do several shows from Animal House. You could go on and on and on and on. And most most movies that were hits didn't materialize a TV show. So maybe they needed to wait till the technology and streaming services and to make a show to make it work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, any, any thoughts about that? Other than you're on mute. You're muted. You mentioned that everybody wanted to have a a star Wars TV show growing up. Um, I don't think I did (laughs) then, but looking back, I wish I had. You know, like I, I, I wish there was something um, because I mean, but at the same time, this is almost like a it's, it's almost like a, a good you know, a sweet redemption. Right. Because you think about like as a kid, I was so into Star Wars and we never knew anything about like some of these shows that like, you know, 
the success like some of the, these post movie TV shows could have because it wasn't really a thing. Um, and I don't think I knew as a kid that I wanted that because I would just watch the VHS tapes of Star Wars over again. Like, you know, that was just kind of like how I got my Star Wars fix. Um, and then when the, the second trilogy came out, um, I remember being so like overwhelmed and excited uh, because those came out, I believe, like 98, 99, A Phantom Menace came out. And I, I was in college during that time. And I remember being like, so overwhelmed about this coming out and then going to the movie being like, well, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> this this is what it's going to look like for us fans. And, and you know, it didn't really, didn't really resonate so hot, right? Um, and then that's when the other stuff started happening. That's when you started seeing things like the Clone Wars coming out mm-hmm. like in, in the mid-2000s and, and the other shows coming out. And then um, when they announced that the, there's going to be another trilogy uh, led by J.J. Abrams, uh, or started by J.J. Abrams, I should say, that's when my excitement got like peaked again because we knew J.J. from from Lost, um, and then in Fringe and all these other great shows. Alias, Alias, right? So I never watched Alias. I was never into it. Maybe I should go back. Um, but like this is a, like a new era of being excited about this stuff because yeah. we're coming, we're coming to the close of that third trilogy and there's a lot of promise for what could be uh, the extension of my childhood again. I mean, you know, I'm going to be closing it on 40 pretty soon and I'm, I'm still feeling like a kid watching this stuff. So um, hopefully with the success of the stuff like the Mandalorian, I, I really hope that the, the money and the effort gets dumped into other shows like uh, the Obi Wan series, right? Oh so yeah, gonna, I mean, uh, the future seems bright. For it does. It, well, it, I, it really I, does. I think again because it's not on network television, right? Even though network television has some great shows, but I think it only it's, it's only going to work if on a on like the Disney Plus or the, you know Netflix or some someone that's going to let you know. I think the networks control too much. Well, yeah. and, and then you have those commercial breaks that I mentioned earlier. You know, yeah. it, it dictates like the the setup, the build, the, the drop, the fall. Like, even yeah, music, you, so you don't you don't want to have to like have it be on network TV and then all of a sudden have like a a Nissan class Star Cruiser flying by because they have to put some product <laughs> shots in there. Like, that, I'm glad that we don't have that kind of BS, you know, happening with this. Um, but yeah, man, it's it, it's it's. It, is the first glimpse into what Star Wars can be post movies, and it's ne- I, it's never going to go away. And I'm 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 excited about it. <laughs> well, um, on that note, I think it'd be a good good time to wrap this up because we're going to be back. We're going to be talking about the Mandalorian uh, throughout the the rest of this season. Um, perhaps Jack will be back. Chris will be back. Um, we'll have some different guests on some of these these future episodes. I hope too. Um, just so I know, I know, I know. After me, it's kind of hard. It, man, you did raise the bar quite a bit there, Jack. I I, 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 I hate to say it, but <laughs> no, I, I'm glad that you were able to come on the show. I know that you you held out for more money, more and more money, and I was just like, wait, I get paid. <laughs> Imperial credits only. <laughs> oh well, if you want to take your. <clears throat> Calamari Flan over to the uh, Amazon.com slash J and Jack. So you can uh, shop and uh, there at the, our Amazon affiliate link. Um, shop all your Star Wars needs. You know, it's that time of year where it's Christmas. Time to buy that special Star Wars fan something you love and use our baby Yoda. Yoda. So so next episode we'll be able to talk about uh, episode two and I'll give a quick review on the Jedi Fallen Order which is coming Ooh. out on Friday on all platforms Xbox PS4 PC the whole nine so nice. um, I'm very excited for this game it's coming out on Friday um, don't think I'm going to do the whole midnight thing but I'll be able to, <laughs> I'll have a chance of playing it before we record it yet okay that sounds great Look, looking forward to hearing that so um and uh, let's see, uh, Amazon, you can uh, give us a review, rate and review us on iTunes. That always helps. Uh, you can become a patron 
which is the biggest way that you can help us out, uh, from $1 to $1 million, which Jack will gladly take. Still waiting. <laughs> Um, you can help us out. Go over to jandjack.com uh, and click on the patron link there. Become a, a patron today. There are a few patrons that make this show specifically able to record. I mean, they, they, they put in that extra money and they're like, give me more own and brews. And I'm like, how hot do you want this spit roasted monkey lizard? Because I will serve it up raw. <laughs> By the way, I thought that was hilarious that the monkey lizard was kind of laugh crying. Like he's caged up. My daughter was like, oh, like, like she actually had sympathy. I thought he was crying. I thought I think I think it was like a, a Muppet laugh cry. I thought he was thinking I'm next. Probably. I'm, I'm sure. I, I love that moment, though. That's it, it definitely would make make a list of some of my favorite moments of this episode. Um, anyway, um, people that the patrons that make this pop possible, and I like to give them a little star Wars send off here. Um, is, uh, sorry. Thanks. Thanks for pointing that out to me, Chris, <clears throat> uh, with their, <laughs> their special star Wars name here. I have tack from Tatooine. What? Eckhart <laughs> two to Eckhart seven Richter old buddy. Do you read me? <laughs> hope you get that reference uh joanne with the stolen death star plans maggie the true mandalorian uh and ed the creepy hut let's not forget drake the star destroyer thank you all for making this show possible uh and uh join us next time when we roast up chapter two of the mandalorian nice what is, is spit roasted something that I should not be like mentioning? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So using the terms monkey lizard raw in spit roast all in one sentence, um, probably shouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's there. I'm not taking it back. It's there. It's there. <laughs> Oh, are we supposed to close it out? Oh, yeah. I'm, just wait, I'm just waiting for you. <laughs> I thought I already said goodbye. Great show, kids. One in a million. What that smile line? I we have everything. spoken. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just completely embarrassed. Just fire up that grill. Carry me out into sizzle land. So, good night. <laughs>